in the old days, it was you know easier to, to keep track of an older family member because chances are they lived on your property and you could look over and you could see that you know grandma's house she there was smoke coming from the chimney she was building a fire she was probably making breakfast making coffee you knew she was good you just looked at that ambient signal we don't live in that world anymore but we think that our approach is is similar we're looking at electricity usage. We're still looking at power consumption. In this case, the modern version is electricity usage from common household appliances. So the coffee pot, the microwave oven, et cetera. The system works like this. We provide three power, inline power sensors that you take into your loved one's home. You plug them into the wall, and then in line, you plug three appliances that you know your loved one uses in a regular way. Uh, my 95-year-old grandmother Lois. We've set up a test installation in her home. It's a you know coffee maker, uh, bedside lamp, and a television. So we get a sense of her well-being at different times of the day. We know she's in her routine. So if if uh, if your loved one, when your loved one uses the appliance, you can choose to get a message. You might like a like a friend of yours checks in on Foursquare at a coffee shop. I have a lot of friends who check in on Foursquare at coffee shops. I enjoy seeing that. I don't spend too much time thinking about it. It's nice though. Now I, now I know when Lois does the same thing. That's my 95-year-old grandmother. I know when Lois has coffee because I know her coffee pot comes on. So I have that same kind of ambient awareness of her that we're all used to having uh, of each other now through social media. So um, that's the system. Here are the design challenges we're facing. I'm calling this tentatively a rhetoric of uh, M to M or machine to machine activity tracking. Uh, so first of all, identity. And I'm going to show you a poem that I like a lot. So this is uh, William Butler Yeats' poem. poem uh, that Yeats was known as the poet of middle age. This one deals with aging. So the old men admiring themselves in the water. I heard the old, old men say, everything alters and one by one we drop away. They had hands like claws and their knees were twisted like the old thorn trees by the waters. All that's beautiful drifts away like the waters. I think this is a, a poem that's interesting to me because the old men are, we, we see that their hands are like claws, their knees are like old thorn trees. They're not beautiful in the conventional sense. Yet the title of the poem is they're admiring themselves. They're looking upon themselves or at themselves with approval. And so what is it about the water that gives them this reflected identity that they're able to have this see to admire themselves through that reflection and I want to suggest that all the technologies that we produce the technologies we're working on the technologies that you know incumbent companies that are doing uh, senior monitoring like uh, uh, care innovations etc the, the good work that David and his team are doing by taking the industrial design seriously with their product for the first time um, that we're all creating reflecting pools, that the people who live with those technologies are going to dialogically interact and form identity. They're identity constructing, subject constructing technologies. And this is a big challenge for all of us to do this, to do this correctly. Um, second uh, issue is ontology. And by this I mean in the semantic web sense that when we start monitoring things around the home, whether we're using accelerometers like Lively's team, or we're using power monitors, Hall Effect, or shot sensors like we're using, um, what, are, what are we monitoring? What are the basic entities that we're actually monitoring? Can we create RDF or OWL statements out of them? Do we want to create ontologies and uh, URIs that we can go to and appeal to them so that we understand when we, that one thing in one home or one activity in one home is the same thing that we're getting from another home at the big data level so that we can do interesting work? Um, so what, is the, what are our ontologies? Well, they're going to get complex pretty quickly because you can stick an accelerometer on anything and you can plug any electrical device into an inline sensor. So how do we account for the plethora of different uh, objects that people are going to plug in? Um, and how do we look at these at a level of activity tracking? So we can look at tax performance, IDLs, uh, ADLs and IADLs. Maybe those give us our, our semantic language. We can look at uh, mobility through the life space assessment, how many levels away from the bedroom someone gets. Uh, energy expenditure, which was, uh, that work was done here uh, out at Stanford. A compendium of physical activities gives us a MET score that we can standardize and use in research. Um, I went to, and it's too bad that the, uh, the investor who invested in Fitbit isn't here because I, hope, I wanted her to see this. Uh, I, I went to a, a presentation that Fitbit presented in, and I, I liked it so much that I used my cell phone camera to take pictures of their slides 
that I wanted to show you. And if somebody took a picture of my picture of their slides, I think that'd be kind of funny. Um, and then if you show it at a presentation. Um, but so when they set up Fitbit and they were setting up the sort of taxonomies for things that people would do, they realized that a lot of times people wouldn't have the activity tracking device on them. And so they made it a series of categories available that people could manually log the activities that they did. And they assumed that people would do things, log things like walking, running, swimming, and bicycling, because that's why they bought their Fitbit, right? Okay. What they ended up doing was <laughs> logging activities like this. <laughs> so changing a light bulb, showering and telling off, drilling coal, barking trees. So they thought, what, you know, they thought, WTF, what are people doing? In fact, nine out of the 20 ac uh, activities people were logging manually weren't even considered to be exercises. And so, you know, they, and, but they all came from the compendium of physical activity. And this is something that they had made available for people, these semantic categories available for people, these taxonomic categories. So what is the compendium of physical activities? Well, it gets bigger every year. This is a, 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 a comp a, um, update from 2000, a supplement. So disco, folk dancing, mopping, multiple household tasks, vacuuming, butchering animals, feeding animals. Water. These are all the things that human beings can do that we can quantify as activity expenditure. So are these the, the basic elements of our system? Or are these the sort of things that, because accelerometers and power sensors will tell us these things, and apparently people using Fitbit wanted to log these sorts of things. To me, it becomes confusing in the way that it reminds me of uh, something I encountered in Michel Foucault's The Order of Things. Uh, I think the, it originally was uh, created by Jorge Luis Borges uh, in a fantastical dictionary of animals, which supposedly belonged to some old Chinese emperor, in which animals are categorized, whoops, sorry, as those that belong to the emperor, embalmed ones, those that are trained, suckling pigs, mermaids, fabulous ones, those that are included in this classification even. That's a type of animal. So very quickly, it, we allow people to start tagging accelerometers onto things or putting uh, motion sensors, positional sensors, power sensors around. We have no idea what we're going to get. This is a problem for us. It's a problem of ontology. I might not have time to get through much more of this. So Katie, you're going to have to stop me when we... Okay, all right. Um, abstraction, I'll get through this. So the problem of abstraction is we have sensors, and the sensors tell us very specific sorts of data. We get positional sensors. We get a very specific sort of data set from an accelerometer or from a Hall effect or shunt sensor. We can look at volts and amps and so forth. Um, but but the, the issue or the problem of sensors is how do we get from the abs how do we abstract from the level of sensor data to some sort of status indicator at a much higher level of abstraction, like things are okay, I'm okay, we're all okay, grandmother is okay. What right do we have to go from low level sensor data to a much higher level of abstraction and represent to people and to caregivers uh, this level, this sort of uh, uh, logical level of information? Um, I don't know the answer to it, but it, it plagues me and vexes me. I don't have time to get through the other two issues, but uh, you can talk to me afterwards. Thank you for the opportunity.